All right, today we are going to do a basic but effective weathering tutorial on this uh, Hasbro Shore Trooper. As you can see, he's already got some weathering with these mud spatters here and on the side of his helmet, but he still looks a little too shiny for my liking. I want him to look like he's been through some shit. So um, this is the technique that I used on this custom clone trooper, as well as my Commander Bly and my custom Mandalorian. Um, this guy's obviously a lot more complex in terms of the weathering, but um, we'll maybe get into that in a different video. But for now, it will be this technique, which is the exact same technique I'm going to be using on the Shore Trooper. Like I said, it is actually very simple. Uh, these videos that I'm doing are designed primarily for people who are new to customizing or have never customized a figure. Uh, the techniques I'll use are fairly basic um, but effective. Um, there's nothing that's going to require you to have like a $500 airbrush or you know, have a paint rack of paints worth a thousand dollars. It's all easy, relatively easy stuff and relatively inexpensive. So, so first thing you're going to need, obviously you're going to need your action figure. It's a good starting point for any custom action figure tutorial, is actually have a figure so you can do something. Obviously you're going to need some water uh, to clean your brushes. You're going to need brown paint and black paint. Um, these are just, I'm actually pretty sure these are dollar store paints. Um, always use acrylic on action figures. Um, enamel or solvent-based paints can cause a reaction with the plastics, um, especially on these uh, Black Series figures. They have a lot of soft plastics um, that react poorly with enamel and solvent-based paints, um, which means the paint will never cure properly. It will always stay sticky. So we've got these two acrylic paints. Um, some people will tell you that you have to invest in like Vallejo or Citadel or something like that paints to do custom figures. You really don't. Um, these are dollar store paints. I've been using these for this weathering technique for years. Never had any issues. And frankly, to do this weathering technique, you're kind of wasting your money if you use expensive paints because you're going to use a lot of it. Next, you're going to need something to mix these paints in. I've just got these. I picked these up at Michael's, I believe. I think there was six in the package or five bucks or something like that. Paintbrush. Again, doesn't matter the quality. This is actually a crappy paintbrush that I've had for years. I probably need to clean it better, but it'll do the trick for what we're doing here. You'll need a soft cloth to, and yes, this actually is a pair of underwear. No, it's not dirty under, well, I guess it is dirty underwear because it's covered in paint, but <laughs> yes, it is underwear. Um, and the reason I use this, I actually bought this specifically for this. Um, you want a really soft cloth, and obviously underwear is very soft because nobody wants to wrap their sack in burlap. Um, you want a soft cloth because in the case of doing this weathering over top of a custom paint job, like this guy here, you want something very soft that as you rub, because that's part of this technique, it's not going to be so rough that it's going to scratch or otherwise damage the underlying paint. Whereas using something like a paper towel, it's, it's fairly rough. So... Soft cloth. Use your underwear. All right, so first thing you're going to do is you're going to squirt a decent amount of black paint and then a decent amount of your brown. I say a decent amount. I don't mean like fill the, I don't like fill the tub or anything, but enough, roughly equal amounts. Now, here's the thing. Don't mix it. What you're going to do is just kind of smear it together. You don't want to actually mix it to form a dark brown because you want slight tone variations in this. So something like that. So you can still see both of the original colors a little bit. There's some mix, there's some original. And so you've got that on your brush. If we can focus. There we go. See how you can see both tones on the brush, but you can also see some of it mixed. So then what you're going to do, we'll start with his chest because it's the largest piece. So what you're going to do 
is you're just gonna whoa that's a little too much <laughs> so i'm gonna start with the uh, soft cloth immediately and just wipe that off and then just go down here and knock some of that paint off in the mixing tray and then there we go so this is what you want you want you don't want to just paint it on make like a big even coat you want to dab it on unevenly and it's okay if you don't get all of the spots that's actually good so then once you've done that you take you take your underwear <laughs> and then you just wipe in one direction downward So there you go, the first layer of weathering is like that. So once you've wiped downward and taken off the majority of that wet paint, you again take the soft cloth and then just rub in the opposite direction. So if you went up and down, you want to rub left, right. And there we have our start. And the whole point of this technique is that you build up layers so this would be our first layer i mean if if this is fine with you when this is dry and this is the level of weathering you want then there you go you're done um, but if you want more weathering then you basically do the process again um, and you can vary the let's say depth of the weathering by letting the paint dry differently so i'll just get a little bit more paint on the brush here and I'll show you on his back. We'll just do the backpack part. So we daub it on unevenly. And then we'll let it dry a little bit more. In fact, what I will do is I'll do the this shoulder bell as well so you can see how it works on the different colors. Sorry, this is a little bit awkward trying to watch myself through a camera lens so then we'll wipe the shoulder bell off immediately again straight down and then across it's all right <laughs> like i said super awkward and now the backpack has been drying for a little bit longer so you can see our weathering is a little bit darker than it was on the chest but again if we want to lessen that all we do is rub a little bit harder and we're good to go <clears throat> And again, we can do that up here as well. You can see, at least I hope you can see, that we've got a darker patch right here as opposed to this side. So I, I like that unevenness, but I'll just show you that if we want to change that, all we have to do is get a little bit of water. And then buff it out. And that... That will basically, that technique of adding water to the figure and then rubbing at it, that will work to lessen the weathering right up until you seal the figure. So I'm going to add another layer, get a section with a little bit more brown in it. And that's why we didn't mix the colors completely, because for the various layers, it helps with the depth if you don't have a consistent color. If you were to do this with all black, it would look fine, but it wouldn't have the depth of adding different colors to it. We'll just let that dry for a little bit longer. You don't want to let it dry for too long because then it will end up, um, when you rub it off, uh, you'll be able to see the edges of the... Uh, weathering the edges of the stippling of the brush which in some cases is actually not terrible 
um, but that's not the look we're going for right now. And you just rub at it in different angles with different pressure and it changes up the look of the weathering. In some of these crevices here, you may need to go in with a damp paintbrush. I did, actually forgot to bring one out with me to do that. Um, but like you can see, let me focus, yeah, okay. So you can see in there, right in here, we've got really dark, which I'm okay with, but I mean, I can use this pick to peel out part of it, but um, you can also, same same as before, use a clean paintbrush with just water, daub the water in there, and that will loosen up the paint. It'll make the paint wet again, so you can actually use that wet paintbrush to draw out the paint. Okay, so I finished off camera, I finished doing the whole chest piece, um, the, sorry, the whole torso, um, just because it was going to be exactly the same as watching me do the front. Um, but what I did do is I went and grabbed a paintbrush so I can show you what I was talking about, about using the water. Let's see, okay, so we've got, I see really heavy weathering right along here, a little heavier than I want. So just use a little bit of wet paint, or sorry, a wet paintbrush. Just dab at it. And by dabbing instead of brushing at it, I'm actually leaving some color behind. I'm not sure whether the camera's going to pick that up or not, but I am leaving some color behind as opposed to wiping it completely off. The other thing, it's not going to matter so much on this figure, but you can see when I was wiping the paint, um, focus, I wiped some down onto the abdominal area here, which again is fine for this figure because it's going to get weathered there anyways, but if you get it on somewhere you don't want weathered, do the same thing. Just rub at it with a wet paintbrush, clean paintbrush, and it may take a couple goes at it, but you will be able to clean that off. Again, unless you've already sealed it and then you're just screwed. <laughs> so, so that's what the torso looks like. I already did this one shoulder belly. Again, I've got some over, over, over spray, whatever you want to call it there. That's fine. Um, but I do want to get rid of those two heavy dots. So water, clean paintbrush. Just rub at it until it's gone. And then we go back to our big screwed up brush and our brown paint. And we'll do the helmet now. I already have paint on my hands. That's kind of standard. If you're going to do a custom, you're going to get paint on your fingers. Nobody cares. This weathering technique is um like i said it's it's very straightforward it's very easy to do um other people have other techniques they use and some people think their technique is the only way to go if you're going to do things properly they're wrong it's your custom figure you do whatever the hell you want with it i feel like that's my bob ross moment it's your painting you put a happy little carbon scoring wherever you want um and that's the big thing to remember is that it's your figure. Um, it doesn't have to be screen accurate if you don't want it to be. You can paint this guy pink for all that matters. The only thing that matters when you're doing a custom figure is that you're happy with the end result. Now, you'll notice that I'm actually getting this weathering paint into his visor. That's not going to be a problem because um, I will be repainting his visor. Uh, anytime I do this kind of weathering on a helmet, um, I end up repainting the visor with, uh, with black paint anyway, so I'm not terribly concerned with that at this point. So 
Sorry, I went out of frame again there. This is only the second action figure video that I've shot, so <laughs> I'm still figuring out how to keep shit together. So there we go. Just gonna rub it that a little bit more. Clean up a little patch up top. Again, the big thing is to make sure your weathering is not uniform because nothing in the world or probably in a galaxy far, far away weathers evenly. That's why sometimes I go back and just do something like that. So I did one on the cheek here, out of frame again because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And I'm just going to dab at it first to get up most of the wet paint and then just swipe down with the gitch so it leaves a little bit of a mark there. And we're going to do basically the same thing with this more brown patch here. And then rub out a little bit more pressure. And we've got marks on the back like that. So I'm pretty happy with how he's looking so far. Um, one thing I will be doing um, later on is uh, applying a bit of water to the um, the blue areas here and on the shoulder. Um, it's just turning a little too dark, um, so I want to see if I can lighten that up a bit. But first, we will I'll do an example of his shin guards. Again, there's there's a little bit of weathering already on here from the factory, but it's nowhere near enough for someone who's been through the battle of not the battle of crate what the hell was the planet called whatever you know what i mean <laughs> we're all nerds you all know what i mean i just watched last jedi so i've got crate on the mind and yes i did enjoy last jedi sorry So I'm applying a little bit thicker to the boots or to the greaves here because I figure that they are probably in, if this were real life, would be more inclined to get dirty over the course of Scarif. That's what the damn place is called. Over the course of service on Scarif than other parts of his armor or her armor, I guess before I put them back together to uh, do this weathering tutorial. I actually had, she had her helmet in her hands and was wearing a Scarlett Johansson head sculpt. Because as anyone who has checked out my Instagram account knows, I for some reason enjoy putting female head sculpts on my troopers. Come on, focus. There we go. The camera's like me a lot of times. It just can't focus. Okay. So there we go. First layer wiped off. Now I'm just going to do a little bit of cross rub here. There we go. And one thing that you want to actually focus on when you're doing that cross rub kind of thing is the edges. Because just like doing dry brushing, it helps the edges pop because you're basically taking more paint off the edges than you are anywhere else. And I like that. It looks like a little bit of carbon scoring along there. And that's another one of the things I like about this technique is that you can actually create these patterns just by pulling a little bit of paint. Um, and it looks more natural than if you were to actually go in with a paintbrush and try to paint those streaks. So there you can compare the two greaves here. Obviously the one over here weathered, the one over here minty fresh from the factory. Well, minty fresh aside from the fact that I had him standing in the river a couple months ago. 
So I'm pretty happy with the way those are turning out. Even the uh, the deeper weathering down here, closer to the boot, wiped off a little more up here. And that's how you build up the layers. So now what I'm going to do is up to this off camera because you basically know what I'm going to do. I'll finish the arm and then I'll show you what I was talking about, about using the water to lighten the weathering on the blue. Okay, so I finished the arm. You can see I added a little bit of more, a little bit of more heavy weathering here. Um, but it's, again, same technique. Brush it on, wipe it off one straight down, and then wipe it off across. Um, and when, again, when you wipe it off across, uh, when you wipe it off straight down, you're just doing straight down, straight down. When you do the across motion, you're rubbing a little bit. And that's what gets these edges, if the camera will focus, that's what get these, these edges here nice and clear. Um, I added a little bit more uh, weathering to the torso here because I needed, I wanted it to have a little bit heavier weathering here. Um, and what I did to get this like almost like chipped pattern here is just exactly what I've been doing before, but um, wait 30 seconds or so before wiping it off. It lets the thinner areas of the paint dry. So when you wipe off, you're only wiping off the thicker areas that aren't dry. I did the same thing up here. You can see right around here. All right, so now what I'm going to do, some water on my clean brush. This area here, I'm just going to just rub gently. You can already see it's starting to lighten up and it lightens up unevenly, which is perfect for what we're doing because weathering is not even. I actually really like how that looks now. Um, if you want it to come off more, you can always rub at it a little bit. That'll take a little bit more, but again, the big thing is clean, wet brush. Focus your camera and rub on the area. Sometimes it will take more rubbing than others, depending on how thick the weathering is and how long it's been dry. But there we go. So we've lightened up those two areas. I off camera and then uh, we'll come back and take a look and here we have the mostly finished figure weathered as you can see i added a little bit more um, spotting weathering here and did do that it, exactly the same technique it's just i just stippled with the brush a little lighter instead of putting loads of paint on i added a little bit more weathering up front here because i felt it was too clean um, and there we have it. So this is how he looks. Um, what you will find is that for figures like this, um, the softer materials, so like the arms, the legs, uh, will take this technique a little bit better than the harder parts, which are the torso and the head, um, simply because of the finish of the plastic. Um, and what you can do is if you find that you're not getting really good adhesion on these two, on the harder plastics, is before you start, um, or I guess if you have started and you're getting poor adhesion, wipe off what you've done um, and then just give them a quick spray with something like this. This is Uyghur's this is matte acrylic coating from Krylon. Um, Again, make sure it's the acrylic stuff um, because the solvent based will fuck up your day. Um, having that having that coat on there gives the paint something a little bit better to adhere to. I didn't have too much of an issue with this guy. I had a little bit of problem with his helmet, um, but uh, it all worked out anyway, so I didn't need to deal with it. Um, two things that I should have actually mentioned off the start is the very first thing you should do before painting any figure, whether you're doing this weathering technique or doing any kind of painting whatsoever, uh, is wash the figure. Wash it with warm water and dish soap. 
um, and let it dry. That gets any factory residue, any mold release residue off the figure uh, because that can also hinder paint adhesion. The other thing for this technique specifically is do it in sections. Um, for instance, do the chest piece completely, then do the helmet, then do the right arm. Uh, if you put too much of your paint concoction on the figure at once, um, you will find that uh, by the time you get, like say you do both arms at the same time, you will find that by the time you're finished rubbing the paint off this arm, that the paint has dried to the point on this arm that your weathering is is very very heavy that it's um, the paint will be harder much harder to wipe off so do it in small pieces that way you have more control over your weathering um, so this guy is essentially done I'll, what I'll probably do is um, I'll do a bit of a wash on the pants just to bring out the sculpting detail and the same with his camera here um, but what I would do <clears throat> excuse me, what I will do prior to the washes is I will use that Krylon and seal the figure because um, the rubbery pieces and not so much the pants, but certainly the rubbery pieces, um, even after washing, don't necessarily take paint very well, especially heavily diluted paint, like a wash. Um, so having that clear coat on top of it gives the paint something to uh, adhere to and will hopefully do the trick for me. So anyway, that's your tutorial. Um, I know this is the point in the video where people usually say like, subscribe, and all that bullshit. I don't actually care. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing this to become some kind of YouTube celebrity, so hopefully you just found the video interesting and useful. And uh, if you have any questions about it, by all means ask me. Um, I'm a little bit more active on uh, Instagram than I am anywhere else, so I'll put a link to my Instagram profile, I don't know, somewhere. Don't they always say link in description? Fuck, I don't know. Anyway, there's your tutorial. You found it useful. Um, and again, you can see I did get a little bit of paint up in his visor. So I will just repaint that with a little bit of black and then hit it with a gloss coat. That's easy enough to fix. All right. Take care.